No, I better start because he's running the stopwatch. That's the instruction. <laughs> that's, that's There's the, a certain logic there. You must agree. <laughs> It's all you think. You're listening to this podcast, and you're thinking it's all to do with creativity and and humour and personality. No, it's all about his stopwatch. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Comedy Slab Podcast. I'm Shane O'Connor. He's Adrian Lacey, or as they call him down in his neck of the woods, Big Stopwatch. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, or start watch it should be called because that's it worked <laughs> yeah whatever i did it worked it did actually yeah it threatens me with the stopwatch and that's it i'm uh i've got time on my hands all of a sudden um this is the comedy <laughs> slab podcast as i say we sit together every week and we review a comedy program one week i choose one the following week he chooses one and um, we give it marks out of five giving you a complete mark out of ten I get really paranoid about saying that because you kind of sound more confident. It's nearly the hundredth show. Yeah, I still don't know how it works. This is episode ninety-five, and um, it was my turn to choose last week. Here's a thing for you: Did I surprise you when I chose last week? When 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 I chose what I chose? Shall we tell them if if they don't? Already, well, it's probably obvious by now. But um, it says on I, the title anyway, doesn't it? So it, it does. But uh, you know, someone might be on shuffle and running and not looking at the display. <laughs> well, are oh, they are they shuffling yeah. or are they running? What they're doing? What's the matter with them? <laughs> they might be doing a sort of shuffle run. All right, I tell them this and week we're we're, re- it. we're, re- we're reviewing only fools and horses. We're uh, only reviewing Fools and Horses. Yes, we're not reviewing anything else <laughs> other than Fools and Horses. Now, first half, it'll be Fools. Second half, <laughs> Horses. So uh, that's why we started with you. And we've gone quite early on, haven't we? We're on Series 3, Episode 3, um, which is an episode entitled Friday the 14th. Uh, but, yeah, no, I just... just did my- it surprise me was the question. Sorry. Yeah, did it? Uh, well, because... No, the biggest surprise, I think, is that we hadn't done it earlier. I think we should. I, you know, I'm I'm up for reviewing any and all comedy, and so I wouldn't rule out. I certainly wouldn't rule out classic comedy because it's. I don't know. What's the feeling that it might have been too well known? Or yeah. Anyways, shall we? Shall we get on? Um, yes. Well, we are getting on, sadly, but be, um, because yes. I think hopefully we'll have a lot to talk about. Um, we we need to. I need to guess what you think of it. Yeah, is that I right? Think that's the essence of it. That's it. Yes, before we hear the first of three audio clips. Now, interestingly, I'll say this because mm. I think it needs to be said. <laughs> I could mime it, but it's not going to have the same impact. There's no doubt about it. I doubt it. I was so, you know, in your love of comedy programs as I do, and although you're not a completist, you will dip your comedic toe into many an episode. <laughs> I was worried for a moment there, but carry on. If, <laughs> in fact, <laughs> you are known as a bit of a a bit of a trollop in comedy circles, aren't you? You'll you'll have a go with anything. <laughs> I'll I'll spread it around, <laughs> but, but not stay for very long on many an occasion. No, I, I you know m- move on wherever I lay my headphones. That's my show. I I remember, I remember you saying that you'd not really watched many episodes if. I think that was only last week, actually. You're saying it like I said it a decade ago. Well, no, you did say it, and that's why it kind of has always been lodged in the back of my mind. I thought, oh, we should do Only oh. Fools and Horses, because I really wonder what you make of it. Because, I mean, it was pulling in massive viewing figures, wasn't it, when it was when it was active? Mm. Uh, in fact, I think it broke the record for viewing figures. Um, f- for, for a sitcom, I think, yes. There's there's a hot debate about what comedy shows got. I mean, the, the usual contenders are Morgan Wise Breakfast breakfast show christmas show like this this vodka's strong um, that would have been an interesting series wouldn't it morgan wise breakfast morgan show wise breakfast maybe i was show, thinking yeah. of that sketch with uh, where they're doing it to the stripper music yes preparing breakfast um but uh that was 1977 but actually they were pipped at the post this is the kind of nerd i am by mike yarwood 27 million Joking. just would, ahead a whisker ahead of them i would never have guessed mike yarwood would, would have no would have I mean, he must be very quietly uh proud of that yeah but but unfortunately it is a bit quiet because most people think it was um more than wise but i think yeah it's a category thing isn't it so in terms of sitcom i read 
probably the same place as you, uh, that uh, yes, one of the Fools and Horses was the biggest ratings puller, but but All, for a sitcom, I think. Although at twenty four million, you'd you'd take it whatever category you're in, wouldn't you? Really? Well, frankly, except <laughs> Boris Johnson's bettered that just in the last week, hasn't he? Allegedly thirty million, albeit for a, a show with not many laughs. And in fairness. It was a captive audience, quite literally. Yeah, quite literally, yes. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> and, and it's his fault we're a captive audience. Maybe that's why he did it, for the ratings. Although I am proud to be in the other half of those ratings figures. The one not watching, mm. the other half of the... Yes, uh, I, I was in that half last week. Right. Now, I'd struggled to name any in my circle who watched it, but clearly a lot of people did. Wow. It's... We're talking about because people listen, you know, historians listening to this in fifty years, as they surely must. We are in lockdown, but he was announcing an easing, a subtle-ish easing of the lockdown. Right. I'm. I'm just. I'm just. I'm quite happy with this. So I'm not going to tell the wife. I've cut all the plugs off the TVs, <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, we're not coming Apart out from your own. We're not coming out till Christmas. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it's, it was somebody said the other day about the Queen had made another speech, and I thought, another speech? I didn't watch the other one. I thought they were talking about the one on Christmas Day. But apparently yeah, this no, is we've had... the third one she's made this year, isn't it? Well, she's realised, she's she's looked through the small print of her contract now and realised she's been missing a trick for about 70 years. She's going to want a series at this rate. You do know that, don't you? She, she thought she was on a flat, you know, uh, rate just for being queen, but it turns out she's on peace rate for doing shows. The more she does, the more she gets paid. Exactly. Clever. Clever. Mm. Anyway, so how many of you watched <laughs> these Only Fools and Horse hairs? Well, um, I, I watched this one February the not February the 14th? No, Friday the 14th. Friday the 14th. <laughs> Enjoy your purple. Thank you. It's your, delicious. Your non- your non alcoholic drink. As my son has now um, learned to say, which is a surprise given that my wife does most of the cooking in the house, he's now learned to say, delicious, Daddy. Oh. I would have thought he'd have learned to say, my tummy hurts. But no, delicious, Daddy. <laughs> Daddy, where's the Alka-Seltzer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you got to eat this as well, he says. <laughs> I, I'm not touching any of it until my, my food tester has it first. <laughs> And that's you. Uh, but once again, we digress. Um, what was the question? How many have I seen? Well, uh, I saw one. I was thinking, actually, while I was uh, prepping tonight's show. I know it doesn't show. But um, uh, a former girlfriend, I think we watched the one that was... It was a Christmas one. Mm. And I think then it was being trumpeted as the very last Fools and Horses. So what would that be? 1998? Eight ish, probably yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah. What was what was the what was the topic? Can you remember? Oh gosh, no, it had a Christmas theme to it. I think right, but um, no, I can't, I can't remember any details. Um, and I may have seen one other before that, just out of curiosity to see what people were talking about. And I've seen the very uh, occasional clip, like you do, which somewhat inevitably has to be, um the hilarious moment of leaning on the bar, which isn't there. And then I worked, as I was name dropping last week, I worked on one and I'm, I struggle, unfortunately. In my mind, I'm wondering if that was a Christmas show. The oddity about it was it was recorded at Elstree, um, which might not strike anyone else as odd, except that most sitcoms were made at TV Centre, uh, this BBC sitcoms mm. in that period, which again would have been the 90s. And I don't know, I'm trying to work out why we were at Elstree, and I'm really struggling with that. It's possible, I know at some various points they were removing asbestos from various studios. I was going to say, it must turn. have been studio availability, mustn't it? It's got to be. It's got to be. Well, thought. there was one exception that we did a lot of lower lows. I didn't personally do that many, but... Um, uh, the Beeb and taking the royal we of our, our studio department um, when I was in signed mm. um, they did a lot and that was for the American market and they did a whole run and the reason they were at Elstree because they wanted to do them day after day after day whereas the pattern usually at TV Centre in those days was same day every week um, you would do the next episode you'd, you'd have it for the whole day would you do a rehearsal in the morning and then that's right do the camera, live, camera do the live. rehearsal yeah yeah and then yeah. do the live in but, the evening 
but they will the artists of course will have done obviously they'll have learned their lines separately and all of that but um they did a a rehearsal without cameras and without any of technicians other than the craft heads who would be making notes as to what they needed to cover it but um that 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 would be called an outside rehearsal and bbc used to have um acton as uh, rehearsal rooms there and various other places a church in kensington church street i think or yeah somewhere around that oh wow church hall so that's the long answer the short answer is not <laughs> not many well i've forgotten what the question was i forgot oh, what yeah. the super program is no, we're reviewing. No more than <laughs> i've forgotten what this podcast is yeah. who you are who are you <laughs> <laughs> now i know your your face is familiar and that laugh i think i've heard before um three or four episodes in total i would say so and that includes the one that you watched twice so that would include the one that i w- for this i'm not uh, counting uh, yeah four you- with that and i mean also including one i worked on right which is cheating <laughs> god help us it's a wonder Ooh. we ever get anything down in it any week <laughs> <laughs> um all right listen shall we uh, shall we cut to the chase then i've got to tell yeah, time. everybody what i think that you think of it i think Mm, again kind of just middling but just just a bit over the border into okay ville so a kind of <clears throat> if you say two and a half is middling i'd say it's like a a three on a scale of one to five i'm not saying that's what you'll give it yes i am why did i say that <laughs> i don't know yeah exactly <clears throat> well if 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 you don't think i'm going to give it that you've got to ask uh, I'll answer what you think I'm going to give. That's it. ridiculous, isn't it? Why did I say that? I don't know. It's, of course, I, that's what I I'm don't know. Saying. You're just so, yeah, being ridiculous. I think it's a three. I think it's just to the the good side of middling. I think you'll you'll you'll. Um, I I'm not sure how well you think it's aged. That but is that, that's a difficult one. Should that be factored in? This is an open question for both of us at any time of any show. <laughs> Should that? Factor, be factored in we sort of touched on it with the old 1970s uh, some others do happen didn't we mm. it's and it's a good question because if it does age well is that deliberate or is it just serendipitous it, i think it's lucky yeah because i think you cannot control you who knows what shape society is going to be in in 40 years yeah and you don't write for that do you i mean you might I, i'm sure the top writers and everyone working on the show think we want to make the best we can for, uh, uh, make this show as good as it can be but beyond that i'm not sure you can say oh this one's gonna last can you you're not in control of that no you're right but also right. but well to a degree wouldn't would you say though that very often we, we you could you could look at something and say actually looking back now that writing in fact i've done this at the time never mind looking back but that writing is ahead of its time it's like nothing else that we've seen and and either conceptually or the way that it's written is ahead of its time well even that i think you can be rewriting history because uh, equally you could say there's nothing else like it oh it might be so odd that that, that it never takes off it could go that way yeah, couldn't it yeah couldn't it? Said, well you're asking me and i'm i can't differentiate between what's brilliant and what just tickles my nostalgia bone so you, you know i very i mean I, I can sit there and it's only when angelina my wife is in the room i can sit there and watch on the buses and think <laughs> it's great and it's only when she sit there after a while and go this is just awful isn't it that i kind of go expecting you to agree well in a way it 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 kind of it, it the scales fall from your eyes don't they in a way when somebody else is it you go oh well maybe it is I, I don't know but how much is nostalgia how much is great should we have a clip from mm. only fools and horses high time it's not going to take us long to get into it because it is a and i often think very often this is when comedy and indeed drama sometimes is at its best is when it's very simple and very simple to explain um, there are, if you've never seen Only Fools and Horses before, it centres around a main character called Del Boy, his brother Rodney, and in the early episodes, uh, his granddad, or their granddad, I should say, um, and in later episodes, uh, their uncle. Um, but the premise is this. Uh, Del, Rodney and granddad head off for a, a, a few days away on a fishing trip, 
uh, well, more and more of a poaching trip rather than a fishing trip, isn't it? They, don't, they only tend to pay for mundane things like licenses. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a friend, a friend of theirs who's a, a car dealer who appears in some of the episodes uh, and uh, he actually appeared in a, a spin-off uh, programme uh, called Boise. Uh, he's got a country cottage in Cornwall um, and the three of them are heading off down there and they end up being stopped at a police roadblock. <laughs> Good evening, officer. Now, if it's about the tax disc, I can assure you that the new one is in the post. Something to do with your road fund license, sir. Down for a bit of fishing, are we? Oh, no, 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 nothing like that, no. And why have you got three fishing rods tied to your roof rack? <laughs> well, uh... uh... Oh, no, no, because you remember, we said we might do a little bit of fishing. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I might do, you know, just a little bit, like, you know, tiddlers. No salmon, no. I see. You haven't given anyone a lift in the last half hour or so, have you, sir? Uh, no. Look, what is this all about, anyway? We just had word that a patient's escaped from the local hospital. Escaped? What you got out here? National Health Stalags? <laughs> it's no ordinary hospital, sir. It's an institute for the criminally insane. See, this storm's brought a few power cables down. Blacked out the entire area. It even put the institute security system out of action. So this patient took his chance and made off across the moors. He's out there somewhere now. For all I know, he could be watching us. I have to say, not the most convincing um, Cornish accent ever. And I've just worked out why. Bless him. I'm mean, sadly he's no longer with us. Um, very good actor in any other uh, regard, I think. Uh, Ray Mort playing the um, policeman there. But um, looking at his biog, and if I can just play you, if you listen out for his first question, assuming you, Shane. Mm. But but people listening shall play along as well, hopefully. Um, you don't have to know where Ray Mort was from, do you? He's no relation to Ted Moles, is he? Because he looks a bit like him. Well, that's Malt, M-O-L-T, isn't it? Oh, what's, what's if this If you guy? mean the double glazing guy, this is Mort, sorry. Oh, sorry, Mort. Yeah, it's your, it's your, M-O-R-T. It's your southern tones, then. It's, you went, <laughs> I'm so sorry. You went all darling. Kent on me, then. I, yeah. <laughs> anyway, listen to his first question here in character as the policeman. Good evening, officer. Now, if it's about the tax disc, I can assure you that the new one is in the post. Something to do with your road fund license, sir. I mean, sir, it could be Yokely, which is not is he from, a flattering term. Is he from the northeast? No, but if you think it says in Wiki, he's from Bury. Uh, so he's got that kind of. Um, I know that's not Peter. It's not quite Peter K territory, as he's Bolton. Bolton. It's like you know, there's a burr there, but it's a different kind of burr. One minute it's Carmel. <laughs> I'm doing the same wandering. But anyway, um, that's an aside. Uh, what can I say? Um, headline. Yeah, uh, headline. Yes, I've been trying to think of that somewhat belatedly. Um, I'm going to go with Only Fools. Oh, okay, is that no good? Horses. Not really. No. Only Fools like this. It's Actually, it's not a very good headline because, no, I don't m- wish to be derogatory about people like you who are slavish fans um i just don't get it frankly i really i didn't then and i don't now and i tried to uh, as it were let the well in a, in a different context you've just used the term um letting the scales fall from your eyes mm. as when your when your wife holds up a mirror to the tv as it were and shows you <laughs> Actually, you might not be watching the world's best show, but I just, yeah, I really, I, I don't get it. But hey, look, the world's a happier place for it. So where does where does it fall down then for you? What what I mean, what is it? Is it characterization, script, storyline? Well, yeah, I need to go back to basics. I mean, characterization. That is. Do you understand that to mean? how the actor in turns the words on the page into a character. Yes. Well, I have got a problem there because for some reason, for a reason I can't even understand and I've got nothing against the gentleman himself, but I just, I don't particularly like David Jason's style. I find, I find he's working too hard 
And rightly or wrongly, I haven't actually, um, I can't remember where, was he raised in London himself, David Jason? I'm not sure. I just, I'm just not convinced by the sort of working class, generic, uh, cockney. You know, one size fits all cockney. Yeah. yeah. Or mockney. It may well be that the joke could be on me. Can you maybe perfectly genuinely uh, London working class background uh, it's perfectly possible or even if he isn't it might be that other things are making me I don't know it's, it's all a bit rubber features for me it's working too hard you see I hold him up as and, and I find it fascinating because I think you're possibly the first person that I've ever met I mean granted I've not gone around asking people the question but you're the first mm. person that I've ever met that has actively disliked the program I've met people before who said, oh, yeah, it's okay. I'm taking a leave it or whatever. Have I actually said I actively just Yeah, like I think it? so, yeah. Words to that effect? Oh, dear. I think only only fools as a headline is, is not... Is not, is not to... <laughs> yeah, but, uh, and then I'll backtrack because, it's, you know, you don't really want to make an enemy of 24 million people, do you? Well, no. <clears throat> well, not if they're all going to come around on the same night. No, I mean, there's <laughs> no question of that. But they won't during lockdown, so I'm fairly safe. Oh, no, but, but has such um has a strong reaction... Um, not not for it. I'm trying to not say against it, otherwise you mm. pick me up on that then. But mm. it's really I find it fascinating you say that about David Jason because he's one of the actors that I very often hold up as as a, a fabulous actor because I when I when I see him in something I forget everything else he's done. I never think of anything. I never think, oh, that's he's like Del Boy in that. Whereas there are other actors who you kind of think, yeah, it's the same, it's the same thing, you know. Or you'll you'll see a soap actor or actress being interviewed, and you think you're just the same as the character. You're not acting at all. You're just being you're, you're turning up and being yourself. And when but is he is he frightfully frightfully in interviews these days? If I imagine that, I might just have seen an interview or. No, I don't think. I don't think he partial. is. I don't think he is. Anyway, the joke is on me. He was born in London, Edmonton. So, um, yeah. So, out of all the accents, that's the one he should be able to do, isn't it? I suppose, really, but not necessarily. I would think so. Well, it, it depends. Uh, you know, how much you want to analyse. Yeah, the socio-economic background. Yeah. Was he allowed to play with the rough kids, or uh, uh, you know, did he go to boot camp, or? Um, I think. School? I think there's probably I mean, a, there's probably a war on, wasn't there? It was around the time that he was. <laughs> Well, he is 80 now, and he was born in 1940. So, yes, there was very much a war. There was a bit, a bit of a war I going think, on, so I don't think he was too worried was. about X Factor or anything <laughs> <laughs> that nature. Um, but, yeah, I mean, and then, and then like, he was, because he was Granville, um, uh, opposite um, uh, Ronnie Barker's uh, Ar- oh, Arkwright in yeah, Open yeah. All Hours. Right. And, yeah. again, I watch him as Granville, and I, and I often used to think, oh, it's because he was younger when he did that. But I never think mm. of him... I never think of him as Del Boy when I'm watching him doing that. And I, and I always thought, what a great actor, because I never, ever think of any of the other things that he does when I'm, when I'm watching him act. But, yeah, I mean, if that's something that you've, you've picked up on, you know, that's, that's something you've picked up on, isn't it? I mean, it's... Yeah, but I don't want to sound like the mean-spirited person I'm quite sure I'm coming across as, because I don't wish any of them any ill, and it's clearly fabulously successful. There's nothing I can say that's going to remotely dent that success, nor should it. Um, and I wanted to like it. Um, I, I have, I'll be honest, I did get drawn in, There, I, I, and I certainly respect the quality of the writing, I did get drawn into this particular episode. Um, I did even laugh out loud at one point but it was quite late into the show by then, and it might have been the only laugh. I think you make a really good point there as well, because the one thing I noticed, I, I think I've told you this before, in the in the first series, mm. it's, it's, it's really a fraught thing to sit and watch it, because nobody knows the show in the first series. And... I remember watching the first series again, and at one point, I mean, he's, he's the big catchphrase that Del Boy's always calling Rodney a plonk. You plonker, mm. Rodney. He's a plonker. Um, and he calls him a plonker in the first series, and all you can hear are the crickets in the audience. 
Uh, I think I remember you saying this in a previous slam because it hasn't been established as a catchphrase, and you kind of think, yeah, your heart's yeah. in your mouth, Adrian. For him, you know, you think, <laughs> oh my God, it's, nobody laughed. It's this is all, you know, like if you're watching somebody on stage dying. But even the, even the actors can't know whether that's going to be a successful catchphrase at that stage. Of course. In fact, yeah, it, I mean, it must be very tempting for John Sullivan, the writer, and we must talk a bit more about him because he's got an interesting backstory himself, appropriately enough. But um, I, the easiest thing would have been for him to drop it, say, oh, that, that bombed. Yeah. Or, or for a producer to lean on him, Ray Buss in this case, and say, it doesn't work, should we not have it next week? But it's somehow, I mean, you've got to admire the gut feeling that, that had the confidence that, no, this will be a, a grower. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. It is uh, it is about confidence, isn't it? And this, this was made, don't forget, in the days where you would know only too well, where... A bit like music, um, media organisations were were like TV channels were prepared to let things grow. And oh it, yeah, they wouldn't drop us, uh, you know, go drop a series halfway through the run as they would these days. Yeah, and, and like if you, mm. you know, if you if first series doesn't, then that's it, mate. You you're finished. Bye bye. I don't want to see you again. Never darken our door. And you may not, you may not get a six parter these days. That seems to be a dying luxury. Yeah. So. There were different times, weren't they, in that sense? But um, mm. yeah, I mean, you're right. We've got to talk about John Sullivan. Should we have another clip and uh, yeah, let's rejoin rejoin the action. <laughs> rejoin the action. See if this clip can make you titter because there wasn't there wasn't a titter to be had, as <laughs> as poor old Frankie Howard would say. There wasn't a titter in the house. The titter cupboard was bare <laughs> last time round. I tittered not. Um, Rodney Delboy and Grandad are. Nicely ensconced. I was going to say safely ensconced in the cottage, but of course they're they're a little bit on edge because it's a stormy night, and they've just been told that uh, an axe murderer is out and about on the loose, having a having a bit of a uh, a tromp around in the woods, and so they're a little bit nervy, a little bit on edge. Um, and uh, Rodney is uh, he opens the, <laughs> opens the curtains, um, <laughs> and he, he opens the curtains, and there's a face lit up in the lightning. <laughs> Outside, and he just does, he just closes the curtains again. But he's sure he's seen somebody at the window, and his his brother Dell goes to have a look as well. There's no one there, Rodney. Look, there's no one out there. He was there, Dell. I swear to you, my face was only inches from that glass. What did he look like? Horrible. He had these evil eyes and this grotesque evil face. Maybe it was a reflection. <laughs> that was no reflection, Dell. I swear to God, I was just. Cl- what do you mean, a reflection? <laughs> no, no, what I mean is that your imagination sometimes plays games with you, you know. It tricks you into believing that you saw something that isn't really there. Dill, I saw the rain running down his forehead. I saw the blood vessels in the whites of his eyes. I saw the hairs coming out of his nostrils. <laughs> well, it might have been the shadows in the trees, Rodney. Oh, dear God! <laughs> I think there's someone at the door. <laughs> no, it's most probably just the shadows. <laughs> shadows? Until they start singing summer holidays, we'll expect the worst. <laughs> Who's there? Oh, good evening. My name's Robson. I'm chief of security at the institution. Oh, thank God for that. What the hell do you think you're doing? It's the chief of security at the hospital. Says who? Well, in just this minute. <laughs> oh, dear. It could be anybody. <laughs> Did they get away with that uh, shadows gag for you? Because I imagine if that was in any other show, you'd be flagging that up as, oh, that was a bit weak. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I, I was listening to the audience reaction on, on, mm. on both runs because we, we listen or watch twice um, just so that we can, you know, we can, we can do it as a... As a casual viewer, the one of the times ran, and and I kind of found myself drawn to listening to the audience reaction. I mm. I would say forty percent got away with it. Do you think? I don't know. I think you're right. I think I probably in any other situation I probably would have um, flagged it up. Although it is that kind of humour, isn't it? Isn't it fair to say that? Well, perhaps that's why it doesn't work for me because it's um, that kind of humour. Yeah. The other thing is, I think. Technically, didn't David Jason fluff it? Because isn't it called Summer Holiday without the S on the end that he put on? Yeah, be wrong. but then, but that kind mm. of works because he does, you know, he does this 
faux French all the while as as the series goes on, and he and he does get he does get things wrong, doesn't he? And and you know say, says things. Oh, that that is one of the character uh, traits, isn't it? Yes, I think so. Um, but yeah, I'd, I, you're right. Didn't it, didn't it? I mean, you say that about the writing, but then you've got that you know where he where he said he was he was grotesque and all that sort of stuff. Are you sure it wasn't just a reflection? And that, yeah, oh, that's a, that's a nice gag. Yeah, I'm, and I, listening alongside you, and you were laughing at that, so that helps me along. See, if I watch these shows with you, th- there'd be a higher tit account, uh, but it would be a bit odd. I wouldn't want to share a sofa with you, and if your wife turned up, that'd be even weirder. Yeah, I lovely mean, though she is. Don't get me wrong. I mean, we are we are supposed to be two meters away. I, I think. I think. <laughs> well, you're 170 miles away from where I'm currently sitting. Yeah, I worked it out a couple of weeks ago, and I think we're we're something like two, two, 24,000 meters away, or something like that. I, I, think <laughs> I, I haven't converted it, but so I thought we're taking no chances either saying. way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, and I'm wearing a mask, as you, you can hear. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a Halloween one, though. You do know that, well, don't you? Bad, but it's very tightly <laughs> But I'm safe as houses. I, I mean, it's that you know, say that kind of humour. There's another mm. line where where he said, "Oh, there's a there's a, a Dale boy said, oh, there's a typhoid blowing out there." Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, and then Rodney corrects him. He says, oh, "It's it's typhoon actually." And he says, "Oh, go on, I will. Two sugars or something like that, you know, to, to, like that kind of." But it's that it is that kind of humour, isn't it? In a way. But that's dated, isn't it? I, I, do they still do typhoon tea? It's not as big as it was in 1983 yeah. when this came out. Typhoon, okay. yeah, I think so. It's still going strong, yeah. Yeah, they don't advertise it as heavily, do they? They used to say you only get an ooh with typhoon. Well, they don't need to. Only fools and horses were advertising it for them, weren't they? <laughs> and all the repeats. So, uh, well, yeah. fair dues, yes. But no, I mean, it's, look, everything is. I think it's one of those things that it doesn't add up. Everything's competent. I'm not knocking the the skills. Uh, everyone's line delivered. Uh, you know, putting putting to one side, um, Mr. Mort's. Slightly dubious accent. Uh, I can live with that. And anyway, you know, uh, I thought to myself, I'm even making excuses for the show as I watched it. I thought, well, a policeman in Cornwall doesn't have to come from Cornwall, does he? It's just the fact that the the accent wavered. But hey, you can get Scottish policemen in Cornwall or police women, whatever the heck. Mm. But um, I think there's a certain dreariness to this school of sitcom that just puts my teeth on edge. And and I know that's part of the humour. It's it's you know it's it's the Steptoe and Son effect, isn't it? It's the what effect? Sorry. So well, I'm calling it the Steptoe and Son effect, which is it's not even the effect. I don't quite mean that, but it's it's you know the the, the very dreariness is the centre of the humour. They're desperate to get out of the situation. Right. Rodney is, Del Boy is, is is desperate to to make that million this time next year. We, we'll both be millionaires. millionaires you know, yeah. That's another catchphrase. Yeah. Um, and uh, well, actually, I suppose it's got to be mentioned at some stage. Isn't that where it goes wrong? Because many series later, they do become millionaires, albeit they then lose it. Spoiler alert! Sorry, folks. But um, this this was all twenty years ago, of course. Um, do you, do you feel it went off at the point they became famous? Did it jump the shark? To use the phrase, I do you know I'd have to watch it back again. But I think I think, and I mentioned this last week. I think. Um, in terms of episode duration i liked it when it was 30 minutes and you got six in maybe i'm just a tradition traditionalist i don't know but i liked it when you know you got you got six in a series and it was 30 minutes an episode and the writing was like that and then every so often you'd have like a kind of christmas one that was 50 minutes and then they kind of started mucking with the format which i think did it more damage than the the, the plot lines personally well, are you saying standard episodes then became non-standard lengths um, outside th- of Christmas specials? Yeah, I think I think I think I'm right in saying that as that as they got further up the series, mm. um, that they were. I think they went to fifty minutes. I think all episodes were fifty minutes. I'm pretty certain. Gosh, they were fifty minutes. Which again, and and this is interesting because I chose this one. Um, I kind of looked through a few, and I I more, almost deliberately well, I did deliberately handpick this one because it was a it was without all the peripheral characters 
Right. And I thought that'd be more interesting because it was more of the it was it was more of a, a focused in the way of Steptoe and Son and Hancock. It was a focused sitcom in that mould. Um, mm. So I probably haven't done it any favours by choosing that one for you, really. I guess, but I did it. I, did. I don't know. I I quite like the the purest element of these shows. Although I never saw it. I mean, I I was working on EastEnders at the time that, that Den and Ange did a double hander. I would love to have seen that. I'm sh- I was just. There, there I remember it was a big. There was a big hoo-ha about it, wasn't it? It made a lot of waves. Uh, yeah, day. which is one reason they did it. But I think it's amazingly brave. Uh, obviously, it can go wrong, but that's part of the risk you're taking. But I like the idea of it. So no, I, d- I didn't take offence to that. I remember that as being very good. Actually, I remember watching that and thinking I really enjoyed that. Um, right, John John Sullivan. Um, yes, we must talk about him. Born in Ballam, uh, gateway to the. Uh, to the south and uh, sadly no longer with us passed away in Surrey so I guess that tells its own story of success in one way or another um, <laughs> so, Surrey includes Croydon as well I, I would oh, wish of to course, point out yeah, no, yeah. no offence to anyone no, in Croydon that's a really good but point but Surrey, Surrey is not all millionaires row but the, you know um, that's where the Beatles moved uh, with the exception of Paul so um, that does tell you something when success calls the interesting thing about John Sullivan, you, you mentioned his interesting past, and I'm guessing this is what you're going to... You're going to talk about his, his brown-coated past, are you? Is that is that what you're I was thinking to? of his, the, the break, the big break, where he wrote a script and he was working as a props guy. That's, that's, yeah, that's what I meant, his yeah, brown, that, his, yeah. his brown coat on. Um, All right. And and they, I remember them selling that as Only Fools and Horses. Um, this guy had written Only Fools and Horses after being plucked from obscurity as a props man. But it can't be, can it? Because it was earlier than that. Not, not in Ballam, but in Tooting. Oh, of course, Citizen Smith, no less. Yeah, and, and I don't know. It's he it was definitely whoever had written this, or I saw an interview or something, and they were saying that you know, oh, he's just written only fools and horses, with no mention of the fact that he'd written Citizen Smith previous to this. And I thought, how odd is that? But but we we should give credit to it. Was it? Um, Dennis Main Wilson, who was now, have I got that right? Yeah, who took the script from him? I it th- was him. Was I it? thought it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he was a noted uh, comedy producer at the BBC. So praise to him. Well, we shouldn't be so shocked because there should be these breaks. That should be the norm rather than the exception. But unfortunately, it is the exception, or certainly would have been around that time. In fact, yeah, anyone in the props department, you know, the, the, probably quite used to. Sadly, people looking down their nose at them. Um, but there's nothing in working in that department that says you can't uh, be a good writer. But that was the break. The interesting thing, I thought, you mentioned Ray Butt um, a, little, mm. a little bit earlier, who actually also worked on Citizen Smith. Right. Well, you know, if, if it ain't broke, yeah, yeah, you find these teams work together, don't they? And they can stay together for years. And also, I mentioned, um, it was a curious one, because I, I couldn't think of any other... Um, comedy program where the theme tune was written by the person who wrote the comedy? There might be the odd one or two where the words are written by the writer. That's got um, an, a natural read across, as it were. The, the only one the only one I could think of was, um, was kind of comedy program, was Minder. Um, and it was actually the words... People think it was Dennis Waterman that wrote it, but it was actually his wife that wrote it. Ah, but Rula Lenska at that. No, stage, no, it, it was it was, um, oh, it was before her. Mrs. Waterman. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, that's a cop out. Yeah, I can't, can't remember her name <laughs> um, for Minder, but um, other than that, um, I, I don't know. But yeah, John Sullivan wrote the wrote the theme music, um, and it was it was really weird because there was a Ronnie Hazelhurst version. It's very traditional sitcommy sound, isn't it? Mm. Anyway, that that tune got boosted into the long grass, and John said no, he wanted something different. He originally wanted Chaz and Dave uh, to record it, but they weren't available. I could imagine that really working. And it was Ray Butt who said to John, because you know John Sullivan is the person that sings the theme tune. Oh, I didn't realise it was his voice. Yeah, no, wow. And it was Ray wow. Butt who said they were trying to get somebody to sing it. They get Chaz and Dave. We can't get Chaz and Dave. And Ray Butt says to John, he said, "Well, why don't you sing it?" Do you know if he? Leapt at the chance or needed a bit of persuasion? I, I think, well, I don't think he was too keen on the idea. And then he kind of went, all right, then, you know, and, and the rest is that. Probably say. meant 
It's history. It's geography. Probably meant a few. <laughs> don't change the subject. I said, do ministry. Um, <laughs> said, don't change the subject. Yeah. <laughs> boom, boom. Um, half a joke is better than none, I always think. Oh, I know. Um, but it would have meant a few extra bob for him because I would have thought, because Ooh. in those days they didn't used to have buyouts. You, I mean, the guy who wrote the ATV uh, little jingle got a payment every time it aired. Yeah. And that can go into thousands over the years. My brother-in-law knows Simon May of the Simon May Orchestra. Oh, yes, and, uh, of the EastEnders theme. Let's just say he never turns up on the bus. <laughs> um, he also knows Andy Pask, curiously enough, because my brother-in-law's a musician. Uh, and he also mm. knows Andy Pask, who wrote the theme tune to The Bill. Oh, I worked with him because uh, he was the bassist in the Wogan House Band. Ah, that's right, yeah. You, I don't uh, know, are you sure you, it's not Andy... Paul, oh no, I'm Andy, Andy Pask. You, Pask. You, you, you might have worked with my brother-in-law actually, because he's uh, might have. He's st- he, he he worked in the West End for a long time, and uh, uh, he found out that Buskin didn't agree with him in the end. But you know, so it's, it's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> don't it's, knock it. If they thought they can, um, yeah. but yeah, so no, I mean the PRS rate, and it's probably gone up now. The last time I checked it for BBC One, the royalty is seventy pound a minute. Oh, it's not so bad, is it? Well, if you if you write EastEnders theme tune and you've got you've got what a minute, two minutes every episode, a minute at the start and a minute at the end. Oh, it'd be more than that. I would have thought at the end, it's more like two and a half. One hundred and forty <gasps> quid a day for sat on your sofa in your in your pants, <laughs> scratching your um yeah. wallet. Yeah, <laughs> it's better paid than this gig. It's ridiculous. Even better. <laughs> but, right, uh, is it time for that? Uh, third act uh, third and final clip i think so i think so um we cut from the cottage um and head over to um the police station prior to this dell has been outside to go to the toilet the, the toilet's outside in their cottage that they're staying in and he, he's had a couple of attempts hasn't he to try and get outside to go to the toilet and every mm. t- every time he goes like he'll go out and there's a crack of thunder or whatever and he'll go oh, i think i'll leave it till later and he's not bothered anyway he's finally persuaded to go out and go to the toilet and as he's coming out he he smacks the door into somebody um and knocks them stone cold out uh, unconscious um but at the police station that's not quite how rodney remembers it yeah so then, right, I grabbed the axe out of his hand and I cracked him good and hard on the jaw, so obviously he went down, right? Then I tied him up good and tight and we bundled him in the back of the van. Well, good work, lad. You say you caught him single-handed? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, no. Uh, there was my brother back at the cottage. He helped a bit. You're too modest, Rodney. <laughs> well, there could be a medal in this. Well... Right, get ready, lads. This one could be a handful. Is this some kind of joke? What do you mean? This is no escape lunatic. This is Tom Whitten, the gamekeeper. And you shouldn't have gagged him like that. He suffers from asthma. <laughs> well, now, hold on a minute. The chief of security from the institution itself said it was him. What chief of security? What's his name? Robson. I mean, you can ask him yourself. He's back at the cottage with Dell. Chief Robson is not at the cottage, he's at the hospital. The escaped man hit him on the head, then stole his uniform and his identity papers. (laughs) I think another slightly dubious, not quite Cornish accent from another um, copper. Um, It sounds like I'm obsessing about it, perhaps I am. They should have set the cottage somewhere else, shouldn't they? (laughs) <laughs> I said, right, what, yeah. what accents can you do? And we'll. South East we'll... London. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how about, right, how about they stay in London yeah. to go fishing in the Thames? <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, well. Um, none of this is said with any nastiness. As you know, I haven't got a nasty bone in my body. No. Um, well, not a single one. I've got hundreds. Um, Oh, I was actually going to compliment Nicholas Lindhurst. Not so much that scene uh, as actually, I think in the f- the second clip, I particularly like the energy he was giving it. And he plays it absolutely dead straight, doesn't he? Because mm. I think that wouldn't work. It needs to be dead against the animation of uh, Del Boy, his brother. Yeah, and uh, I think I- he does well to build the character as well, doesn't he? Because you can, you can, from the as the episode goes on, you can see that, you know, he's a very... Um, 
he's, he's not the sharpest tool in the box, but he's got a very high opinion of himself. And you can see all of that kind of coming out, can't you? You know. Yeah, and certainly he, he's, it almost literally feels like he's out from under his brother's shadow. Yes. When, he, when he's there at the, um, the cop shop without his brother. Yeah. But he goes back into that shadow once uh, the, the brother's with him. Anyway, we've said it's a BBC uh, production, have we not? In the days when it was so much simpler, you just said it was BBC. These days you'd have to say, oh, BBC Studios, or was it BBC Studios and Post Production, or BBC Studio Works, or, or some outside contractor for the BBC. It's a, it's a mighty complicated world compared to that, isn't it? Yeah, it was quite straightforward, wasn't it, really? Um Mm. Just a quick on the end scene, which we didn't we didn't really. Oh yeah, I was going to say yes, an unusual ending or unresolved in a way. Yeah, compared to the usual sitcom norm. Yeah, quite brave I, they think to do that. It was. It was well, I didn't I I didn't know what, what to think of it because I wasn't expecting that to be the ending. Um, spoiler alert is we can't spoil it because there's no ending in a way. It doesn't resolve in a traditional sitcom way. Uh, it was missing or it felt. To me, because I was expecting it, it felt like it was missing a scene where they all get together and talk about how how it resolved. And wasn't it funny when you did this? Yeah, but that could have happened. But oh, uh, thank goodness you, it didn't. You surprised me now. I thought you would have I'm given not, it. I'm not saying I... Am I saying I didn't like it? You seem to have got that impression. Yeah, well, you kind of said you 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 felt there was a scene missing. So that... Yeah, I suppose, like if, yeah. If somebody brought you a full English breakfast and your sausage was missing... <laughs> You wouldn't go, well, oh, I really like it like this, would you? You'd go, oh, I was disappointed because th- there was something missing. But, yeah, I, I really liked it for that. That, to me, gave it – it kind of elevated it a bit because you kind of think, oh, how how brave, I suppose. Is it? I mean, this sounds a bit condescending, but how brave to, to you know, go against the trend. Yeah, I, I suppose the principal thing for me was, was shock because you are – if you watch enough TV, as I certainly did in my youth, um, the, you you kind of fall in with formulas, don't you? Yeah. And there's nothing more formulaic, which is not to, to, to denigrate the, the art form. Every art form has its conventions, um, poetry and, and, and so on and so forth. Um, but it did surprise me. And, uh, and because I wasn't expecting it, there was the that feeling of, oh, it's not quite as satisfying as I was uh, expecting. How weird. But, yeah, I'm, a, I'm aware I'm digging a very big hole for myself because suddenly it's, I, sound, I sound like the one who wanted it to be more mainstream, even though my complaint earlier sounded like it was too mainstream. Yeah. I, I mean, I hold, that whole snooker, the imaginary snooker scene, they're playing, they're playing an imaginary game of snooker, um, mm. and there was, there was a, they did a bit of business where they were fighting over the queue. Um, mm. And I don't know if did you see how they did that? Where it was the second time he, I watched it. He wasn't letting his hand go. He, he put his was thumb it, uh, up. He put it, he put his thumb up and, and he grabbed his thumb. And so they were actually moving his thumb backwards and forwards, which I thought was quite. <laughs> and it was almost like looking behind the curtain. I think, oh, I've kind of ruined that for myself a bit now because I'm going to be looking for that. Him sticking David Jason sticking his thumb up, and the other the other guy, the other actor, grabbing it like they're fighting <laughs> over an imaginary snooker cue, which is kind of. <laughs> yeah, I did like that. Anyway. I digress. Uh, I can see. Yes. I can see that we're not going to get any further forward with your bad attitude this time round. There's one thing I wanted to say about how David Jason works, if I may. My bad attitude. Well, just because I don't agree with you. <laughs> um, all I will observe was, and again, it's not, it's not having a go at the guy, and it, uh, you can read it either way. You can see it as a compliment to his um, great all-round skills, or see how he will, but. The point is, he was doing quite a lot of directing himself, almost directing of himself from the floor. Mm. And I'm trying to remember, sometimes directors come down to the studio floor, particularly earlier in the day, when they want to see where the cameras are and to talk one-on-one with the actors. Remember, they have, of course, as I'm saying, they've worked together for some weeks, probably, and certainly some, a number of days before in um, outside rehearsal. Uh, spaces mm. so it's not they're not strangers to the script or to each other but um i, I can't remember if the, if the director came down i don't think he did actually i think he stayed up in his box as it were but he did allow david jason because i mean let's face it you could be the most well you'd have to be an extremely experienced director to not take 
David Jason's notes, um, you'd have to be very sure of yourself or perhaps a little foolhardy to um, go against what David wants. But then David does know his stuff, you know, down to, well, if I move my hand here, you know, if I, in, in the example you've just given, if I put my thumb up and we struggle, that will get a laugh. Mm. Once I let go of his hand, that will get another laugh. You know, he'd be so accomplished because his first gig, if you look at his bio, because you probably did, 1964 mm. Crossroads. So even I'm talking about early to mid 90s so even by then he's been in the biz for 30 years and then when, when oh, you look at the people that he's TV. worked with as well i mean he's he's worked with anyone who's anyone in comedy hasn't he as well by, oh, yeah. by that stage yes no no he's, he's earned his earned his medals um ronnie barker always thought very highly of him didn't he as well i i, I, I don't know yeah and and, and ronnie barker wasn't wasn't a man who would scatter praise around willy-nilly was he no, absolutely not. Come on, we put it off, and we can no put it off no longer. It is. The- yeah. Well, I'm I'm torn. The, the, the trouble is, I've got a bit of bloody mind in this. Once you tell me what score you think I'm going to give it, I then don't want to give it that. But I had actually decided, even by the time you told me I was going to give it three out of five, I was I'm afraid and unusual for me in the ballpark of two and a half. Okay. Okay. Um, but two and a half going on three, but I. Let's stick with two and a half, but that that is just that's I, I emphasize it. it's it's not having a go at the craft of everything on screen and indeed off screen. It's it's personal preference. Perhaps we should stop. We should stop the bit the the game we play at the start because it, <laughs> if it affects. Oh the no! Score, don't don't get nervy now. No, I just no. Think it, you... ha- it hasn't. It hasn't actually in this mm, case. I don't believe. Do we believe him, everybody? You know, look, <laughs> look, they're all shaking their heads. Even Ooh. Sooty's shaking his head. Do we believe him, Sooty? What would you say, Sooty? What's he, is he lying through his it, teeth? <laughs> He's a southerner, isn't he? We, we better not trust him. <laughs> anyway, it's time to hear your four and a half. Is it going to be four and a half? It's certainly going to be four. I think four. <clears throat> yeah, I think I think that's a fair a fair place to put it. Uh, four mm. and a half from me. Uh, sorry, four from oh, me. Four and a half. Four, four. from me. Why not, why not four and a half? Not four and a half be- because um, it is that kind of comedy. I think you're quite right. I wouldn't disagree with that. It is It is of of a... I, I, I think it's that kind of comedy, but I think it's, it's, it's in the higher echelons of that kind of comedy. I think it's the leading exponent of that kind of comedy. And... The reason that I give it four is because, you know, it's one of those where I could quite happily, if you said to me, do you want to watch an Only Fools and Horses? I could sit and watch an episode, even if I'd seen it ten times before, and some I probably have, and know the script and know what's coming, I would have no no qualms about watching it. I think it is... It is that good. It's that well written. It's that well played. I think. I think. It, it, like if if you were to give it a football team analogy, it's it, they are a dream team. I think. I think it's one of those where mm. everybody comes together and it just works. Okay. So it's a four from me. So six and a half out of ten for only fools and horses. Um, I put a link in because obviously it's not unless you've got um, uh, gold. I think it's UK TV gold in the UK. Um, unless you've got that, you won't have any chance of um, watching it because I think that the BBC keep it on that because it's a pay-per-view channel, um, and so they're making sure that they get the the maximum revenue back from it. So it's not actually out in the public domain in that sense. However, if you do want to pay for it and you want to pay for it by episode, you can do um, via YouTube, believe it or not. Um, <clears throat> and I'll put wow. I'll put the link in there as well, so you can. I think it's on. Netflix and Amazon and other stuff as well, but I put the link in for uh, YouTube and it's, it's about one pound eighty nine an episode or something like that. Oh my gosh! Nice to know it's still earning money for the Beeb. Oh, big, big uh, time! Yeah, yeah. And all the um, players, uh, no doubt. Not, not so good for, not for good for people who think that the BBC is a public service broadcaster. But you know, you can't have it all. Well, can you, I suppose, you know. Yeah. So. No, it'd be nice if they were making so much money they didn't have to charge a license fee. Ah, I think they probably are, aren't they? Really, but uh, <laughs> but but they're not going to admit to that. It's a bit, it's a bit like the NHS, well, isn't it? The more money they get, the more money they need. You know, so it's it's one I of those unfillable buckets. Possibly coming. Well, come on then. What will we do for next week then, Saucy? I am nervous about this one. It could not be more different. The only similarity is it's TV. 
Um, I'm still nervous. I haven't seen this particular episode, but I have seen the first oh. one. And I would have to say, uh, the it comes with an advisory, which is it's not for under 18s. Oh, what am I going to do? Well, yeah, exactly. Your mental age. <laughs> That's 18, not 80, love. I hate it when you're um, nervous, because it makes me nervous then. Go on, go I know, on. I know. Spit it out, Ducky, and spit I, it out. I seriously wondered about getting your permission first. Oh, be And I thought, no, that's that's just too too shaky. That's the whole um, point, isn't it, the Jeopardy? I love it, I do, when it's kind of like ones and you think... And well, if I tell you, it's about... You'll love it, in quotes, i.e. you might not. Um, it's about... Um, women taking control um you yeah i mean this could all go so horribly wrong but it might be entertaining the way it goes horribly wrong yeah you might not like the fact that the the male characters are not strong because the women are young women we're talking here yeah late late teens even i haven't got a clue um, what this is no and i don't i think i could carry on for an hour and you still might not know unless you happen to have just chanced upon it and i did to be honest um, it's on your favourite app, which you love calling Awful, uh, or All Four, as the rest of us call it. It sounds like a Channel 4 programme. I I yeah, got, I it got most that. certainly is. It most certainly is. Anyway, it is called Chewing Gum. Have you heard of it? I have, yes. Curiously enough, yeah. Possibly for all the wrong reasons, I don't know. Well, no, I, lo Actually, I looked at that and thought, there's no way on earth I'm watching that. <laughs> well, there's every way on earth, because I'm telling you to. I'm going to go for the third in the series. I think there is only the one series but certainly it is series one episode three chewing gum on the all four app it's from channel four which probably means it's and i haven't checked actually to be honest but probably an open-ended time limit certainly in the uk um on twitter we are at comedy slab likewise at comedy slab uh, facebook page if you could follow us on twitter and uh, like our facebook page we would like you to in return nay we'd love you personal recommendation be fantastic whether in lockdown or not or however you get the message out if you could uh, give us a big thumbs up to your friends and family we'd appreciate that too and finally uh, a generous star rating on itunes stroke apple Podcasts. that would be fabulous also, thank you very much. And uh, as he mentioned, uh, Apple Podcasts, I mean, he didn't mention Spreaker, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, <laughs> Spotify, YouTube. Why would he? Because I've got to have something to do, haven't I? Otherwise, I'm just sat here yeah. like a spare part, like, you know. So uh, <laughs> it's no good at all, yeah. Uh, and that's it from us. Thank you very much for your company. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you investigate a comedy or two, um, either based on our recommendation or uh, even better, based on our enthusiasm, uh, which would be nice because we do have a bit of that from time to time um until next time i'm off to uh, have a look at that reflection in the window and figure out whether it is a reflection or, or whether that horrible grotesque feature is just the wife telling me that it's time for me to come out of this room and go and do something else and i for my part i'm not going to call shane a plonker but i am going to call him what was used in the episode we've just slammed which is uh, from me to shane you wally <laughs> 